Welcome back to Getting Started with Unreal Technology. In the last video, Zach got our basic level carved out by using three different subtraction brushes. Basically, we have two rooms connected with a very simple hallway. From there, he applied all of the materials to the level so that we had some sort of textures on our walls, floors, and ceilings. Mm -hmm. With that, he's also put two lights into place so that there's some illumination within the level itself and everything's not black. Now, in this video, he's going to begin populating the level with static meshes. This is where we get our rich detail from in Unreal Tournament maps. That's right. When you play UT3 maps, you're going to see that just about every visible surface is generally a static mesh. That's right. And the nice thing about static meshes is the way they work with your video card. Basically, when you bring in one static mesh and then duplicate it a hundred more times, the overhead is very little, making it where that the uh, system can stay nice and fast when rendering to your screen. That's right. The key is instancing, using multiple copies of a single mesh. Now, what we're going to be doing in this particular level is keeping the static mesh load very light. We're just going to put a few here and a few there for some general decoration, but that's because this is an introductory level. Now, if you start to get the hang of what we're doing and you just really want to coat every visible surface with some sort of a mesh, by all means, have a good time with it. We're just going to keep things fairly simple in terms of this level. Now, of course, the static meshes that we're going to be using will be available for you to use inside of packages that have already been created because these static meshes have been used within Unreal Tournament 3 levels. That's right. In fact, let's go ahead and get those packages in place. What I'm going to do is open up the generic browser. And I'm going to open up several packages all at the same time. In my case, I've already researched out the meshes that I'm looking for. I know what packages they're in. If this is the first time you've ever built a level, you probably have no idea which packages include what assets. So take a little bit of time and play around. Open up some packages, see what's in them. Although, do not... I just I repeat, do not open up all the packages at once. I'm sure that your computer doesn't have enough memory to support all yeah, of these. It's going to be time. very demanding on the resources. So let's go ahead and open these up. All right, and uh, the packages that I'll be looking for are under the ASC series of, of environment packages as soon as my open window comes in. So we'll go under environments, and under the ASC heading, I'm going to grab Arch 2. We're going to grab Deco. We'll grab Deco Statue. We're going to get uh, Light. We're going to get supports, and I'm going to grab light two just in case because I think there's a mesh in there that I want. Now, that's everybody that I'm going to look for, so we'll go ahead and click open. Now, of course, he's opening multiple packages at once, and normally it takes a little bit of time, but wow, that was actually fast. That was actually really fast. <laughs> Faster than I thought it would be. Alarmingly fast. Now, also, I'm going to narrow down what I want to see in this view because right now I have materials uh, available. I don't necessarily want to see any materials, so I'm going to check static meshes. And notice the Show All Resource Types checkbox immediately deactivates as soon as I click something in here. I'll switch off materials because I don't need to see those. And I also have textures. We can turn those off as well. And now the generic browser is only showing me the static meshes that are within these highlighted packages. That's right. Very handy for me. Now, where to begin? Uh, sometimes when you are building your own level, you might not know exactly where you want to get started with your static meshes. You know, when all else fails, I start, go, uh, start adding my meshes in terms of what do you need to have. Don't worry about decoration at first. Go with practicality. It would be nice if we had some supports running across the ceiling. So I've got a really nice ornate deco beam mesh here. I'm going to select that in the generic browser. Once it's selected, I don't really need the generic browser anymore. We can go ahead and close it. And I'm going to right-click on some surface in my level. It doesn't really matter where. I guess we'll just start on the floor and go to Add Actor. And there's a lot of different things you could add in here. And a lot of these are just different ways you can bring this mesh into your level. I'm going to choose Add Static Mesh, which is at the very top, so it's the easiest to uh, locate. Click on that, and our mesh magically appears. So let's have a look at it. It's a nice big chunk of wood with what look like a couple of dragons on it. Now, the material's already applied. It's ready to go. That's right. Let's get this up to the ceiling. So with it selected, I'll put my mouse on the Z-axis part of the translation widget, and we'll just drag that right up to the roof. Now notice as I do this, I'm snapping in nice 16-unit increments, just as a reminder. That's because my drag grid is currently set to a value of 16. You can also find this in the lower right-hand corner of your interface in the console bar, but because we're recording at such a low resolution, you won't be able to pick it up on our recording. Now, I'm going to jump over to the top viewport, and we'll switch over to brush wire frame mode so that I can get this positioned exactly where I want it. I'm going to begin by putting it right in the corner of the room, and we can see the outline of the room if we select the brush. And we're going to bring it 32 units to the left. And that's 
two of those squares over since we are looking at each square representing 16 units. That's right, 16 times 2. All right, now I'm going to hold down the Alt key, and this is going to allow me to duplicate this mesh. So while holding Alt, I'm going to move this mesh in X, and notice it leaves a duplicate behind. That is one of uh, several ways that you have to duplicate something. You could, if you wanted to, hit Control w which creates a duplicate that is offset from the original, like so. So now I have another one sitting here. And uh, another one, uh, another method of doing that, this non-hotkey, is you can go under Edit and choose Duplicate. So just a, a lot of different ways to do that. Now, I like using the Alt-Drag method just because it doesn't deal with the offset and you automatically leave something behind. So what I'm going to do is hold down Alt, and we'll drag off to the left, and I'm going to move this guy over 96 units. Uh, basically, I'm looking for a 64-unit gap in between these. So we'll hold down Alt one more time, and there we go. Now, let's point something out. Right now, you might not be looking at the bottom when Zach is moving these over. Remember, in the last video we talked about down here on the console bar, we have a representation of how far you are moving something around inside the editor. Make sure to use it. Zach was actually looking down there when he was dragging these over while duplicating and looking for that 96. Absolutely right. Also, keep in mind that when duplicating multiple objects like I was doing here, you need to let off, you need to release the Alt key in between motions. So, like, if I just hold down Alt and I'm move over, we get a duplication, but if I don't let off the Alt key, the next time I move, we're just moving. You have to release Alt and hold it down a second time to create that next duplicate. That's right. Now, I've got a few too many here, so I'm going to go ahead and delete uh, this one, and we'll delete these two as well. So this is going to remain open. There's some uh, pillars that I want to put in here, and if I populate this whole thing with, uh, with beams, they're going to get kind of in the way. Now, at the same time, if you're building a level on your own, you might not realize that. You might think to yourself, well, let's go ahead and put beams all the way across the ceiling, which is not a bad idea. You can always take them out if you decide they're getting in the way later. Okay, so let's jump back into the perspective view, and we'll switch over to lit mode, and we can see these uh, beams appearing in the, in the right room. Make sure you're looking <laughs> in the right direction. So there they are. The next thing I want to do is add some pillars into the corners of the room. So we'll go back into our generic browser, and I'll uh, put my uh, attention, sorry, <laughs> as I get a little distracted. We're going to click on the supports package over here in my package list. And at the very top, we have the ASC supports SM pillar 01. Let's close our generic browser, and I'm just going to right-click here in the corner of the room. We'll choose Add Actor and Static Mesh, like so. Okay, so here's our pillar. It's looking pretty good, but there's a problem. It doesn't make it all the way up to the ceiling, so we need to change its size. Fortunately, we can do this with the Draw Scale fields down here in the lower right-hand corner of our interface. There are four of these. The first one allows you to scale up uniformly in all three of your axes, and then the other three fields allow you to scale on one axis at a time, the first one being X, the second being Y, and the third being Z. Set X to 2, just so you can get an idea. Well, that's not exactly X, but... It's not A. Sorry, that was yeah. Z. It's the one I was on. Z is a little misleading because it just makes it a lot taller, and you might think, hey, that's what we should use. Let's go ahead and set that one back to I 1. I set it to 0, so it got all flattened. Now, so set X to 2, and there you go. That's a good representation of what happens when scaling on just a single axis. Yeah, you can see it gets wider, but it still stays relatively thin in the Y axis. But in this particular case, that is not what we're looking to do. We're looking to uniformly scale this up so that it fits between the floor and the ceiling. That's right. So we have the X, Y, and Z field here in the very beginning, which is nice because that means we don't have to plug numbers into each sure. one of these fields. So we'll start off by setting this to, say, 1.3. Uh, and I might have got a lucky guess there. Yeah, this yeah, is uh, ending pretty, pretty much at the ceiling. There's a little tiny gap if you get your camera right up on it, but I don't think that's going to be apparent to a player because their, their viewpoint's going to be way down here. So I think that's actually going to work. Looks good. Let's jump into the top view, and I'll switch back over to brush wire frame mode, and we can get this uh, positioned. I'm going to put it right into the corner with just a little bit of a gap from the two walls. Now let's make a, a duplicate of it. Now in this case, check this out. I'm zoomed way in, and I want to make a duplicate that goes over in the opposite corner, but if I do that, I'm going to need to move my camera as I duplicate. Here's a little trick. We're going to hold down Alt so that we're uh, dragging and leaving a duplicate behind, but I'm also going to hold down the Shift key. And by doing this... We're actually holding our new mesh right in the center of the camera, right where it was relative to camera position, and the level slides. So I got a second copy, but as opposed to just moving the mesh, the camera came right along for the ride. That is a very, very 
nice, convenient way of duplicating something when you've got a large level that goes outside of your viewport. That's right. Okay, so we've got our two pillars in place. Let's have a quick look at those. We'll jump back into perspective and lit mode, and those are looking pretty good, mm-hmm. I think. The next thing I want to do is put a uh, fountain in, and it's a fountain that's going to have a little bit of a framework around it, so we're going to use a, a couple of different meshes. I'll begin by getting the framework in place, so let's open up a generic browser. I'm going to go into the ASC Deco package. And we have bell stick frame, which is actually supposed to house this little bell static mesh, but we're going to use it for something else. So you're going to start with the framework before the fountain? Before I put in the fountain. That's right. So let's right-click. We'll go to Add Actor, and I'll bring in bell stick frame, which is pretty good, but not exactly what I had in mind. You'll notice part of it runs up out of the level, but that's okay. Actually, more is going to run up out of the level by the time I'm done. I'm going to blow this up just a little bit, and we'll do it from the top view, or I'll get it positioned from the top view, at least at first, because I want this cross beam to run right in between my two pillars, like so. Now let's go back into perspective, and we'll jump into lit mode, and let's try 1.2. That's pretty good, maybe just a little bit bigger. Let's push that up to maybe 1.25. You'll notice I'm kind of arbitrary with my scales while I'm building, just to see if I find just the right one while I'm working. Let's do 1.3. I think that's going to work, because really the the goal that I'm uh, trying to get here is that these pillars will look like they're holding up a framework right up against the ceiling. It is pushing certain parts of the mesh outside the level, but that's not really a problem. Nobody's going to know. It's uh, totally fine here, but it does give us a nice-looking frame. Okay, now if we just uh, get the fountain in the middle, I think we'll be just about done. So let's go back over to the generic browser, and we'll scroll down, and there's our fountain right there. So I'll select it. It's uh, Deco SM Fountain 01. Let's close the generic browser. I'll right-click here in the middle of my frame, choose Add Actor, and bring in the fountain. And you'll notice it kind of crosses over, and it kind of overlaps the uh, framework, which is not really a problem, but we will make this just a little bit smaller. Let's try a value of 0.8. I think that looks pretty good. It's still crossing over a little bit, but it still looks functional. Yeah. Yeah. So it looks like it was kind of built to fit in that way. That's right. Okay, so now let's go back into the generic browser. I'm going to bring in a decoration. We've got this fountain dragon who's meant to go along with this mesh. So we'll close out the generic browser with the dragon selected. This time I'll right-click on the fountain itself. Again, we'll choose Add Actor, Static Mesh. And there's our dragon, but he's just a little (laughs) big. Just a little. Coming through the wall. That's actually really cool looking, but not what I had in mind, especially the hand part. So let's go down to maybe 0.7, and now I have to worry about a little bit of positioning. So we'll lift this up into the air. I'll drag it over in X a little bit. I think that's fitting pretty well. Um, You might maybe bring it in just a little more. Let's try maybe 0.65. Also make sure that we're sitting right on that surface. It looks like we're actually cutting into yeah, the fountain a little bit. So it would be nice if I could set it right on top. And you'll notice that I'm running into a little bit of a problem because snapping won't let me find that happy middle ground. Whenever you run into this problem, just come over to your drag grid and set the size down a little bit. So we'll set it down to 8 and see where that gets us. Looks like we still won't quite hit it. So we'll go back in, try a lower setting. And there we go. So now it's sitting. I think that works. Yeah. I mean, it might be crossing over a little bit, but I think in general it looks a lot better than the way it was floating. Okay, so let's set our drag grid back up to its default value of 16. And just as a pointer, don't jump too many spaces when you're setting your drag grid down. I highly recommend, at least when you get started, to go down step by step. Yeah, a lot of your beginners are going to jump all the way down to a value of 2, or even... Or just turn it off. Or even turn it off. Yeah, please, yeah. don't turn your drag grid off, at least until... Uh, not until you know for certain that you absolutely do not need it. And even then, you can probably still use it if you set it all the way down to 1. But now we've got our dragon in place, and that's looking pretty good. And I think overall, I'm liking the way this room is laying out. Your walls are a little bare. Maybe we can put some sort of decoration on the walls. I've got just the thing. Let's do go, you now? Let's go back over to the generic browser. We're going to hang a gong on the wall. Yeah, you, you can't have a room like this without a gong. No, you've got to have a gong. So <laughs> we've got a gong and a gong blade. We're going to bring them both in, one mesh at a time. So I'll select the gong blade. I'm just going to move my generic browser out of the way. We'll right-click on this wall, choose Add Actor, Static Mesh, and there we go. Drag this down a little bit, because uh, I like the idea of it being right within these wood panels. And I'm going to kind of back away from the wall. I want to get a good idea of, uh, of spacing. I don't think this necessarily needs to be right in the magical center of the wall. I wouldn't. I, I think it looks pretty good right there. Maybe, I don't know. We might pull it back this way. Because we've got so much going on on this side of the room. Sure. might balance it out to drag it slightly to the left. Who could? 
Of course, now, as you know, you're going to have to adjust your texture, which you can do that and show that to them real quick if you want the center paneling to run right down through that top hole on the blade itself. Yeah, that, that is true. When we had the mesh over here, we had that really nice alignment with our texture. But if we move it over here, well, we could line it up to that guy. Yeah, that's not a bad idea because you could, you could definitely slide it over. Mm -hmm. the, as a matter of fact, let's just go ahead and show them that. But then I'm going to show you what I don't like about that. Okay, so I'll select our little uh, panel here. And if we want to move the texture, we need to go back into uh, Surface Properties. That's right. So we'll close out the generic browser for now. I'll press the F5 key to open up Surface Properties. And we have the pan group here inside the uh, texture browser. I'm sorry, here inside of our surface, surface properties, properties window as I get all confused again. If we click in the U direction on any of these buttons, we are moving the texture along in U, uh, which is in general, it's going to be horizontally. And you're moving it by the number of units shown on the button. So mm -hmm. if I click it, click the one button, we're moving it one unit. If I click 16, we're moving it 16, and so on. You can also hold shift as uh, designated here, and we can move in the opposite direction. So I can slide it back. Now, using this method, I can put that line right back down the center of our mesh. I think one more, yeah. and it'll be right there. But here's what I don't like about it. Let's look at the corner now. Yeah. This is a common mistake of beginners who love putting together maps and putting them out on the Internet for other people to play, is when your textures really aren't lined up nicely like this. Yes, it's definitely lined up with our static mesh. But looking in the corner here, well, they could have done a better job with alignment. And by having the panel go all the way into the corner as opposed to just the start of another panel, it would look better. That's right. So we'll tick this over until we get uh, right about there. And so you can see that panel ending. Mm -hmm. You might also want to take a look at the design right here, where these two panels meet, because you might take uh, this sheet and start to truck it over so it looked like those were lining up. Now, you might not be able to find a really super happy medium where you have this panel running all the way into a corner and this part lining up as well. So... Yeah, you know, I would put importance up here because it's going to be uh, fairly That's unlikely right. the that main you know, thing anybody would notice. See. But you know, if you can, if you try, if you can get them both, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah there that looks you go. Good. That's not nice. bad at all. And it looks like it's hanging on out here, looking. Really and of nice course, here. right now the goal of us is not to go in here and spend a lot of time with texture placement, just to kind of get you up and going with this basic level. But that's that's looking pretty good. I just wanted to point out why I didn't like the idea of shifting it around. And well, now I want to shift this one just a little bit too. So okay. Right here, we're almost done. And click. There we go. So now that yep. lines up. Everybody lines up, and everybody's looking good. Okay. Now, you could, of course, do this with all of the uh, different sure. textures across your corners. So I just wanted to drive the point home. So at this point, um, it might be a good idea. You could line your mesh up right there with your line. I mean, if you wanted to be right in the center of a panel, you could do that, too. Just, you know, get a feel for your level. I think, really, it looks good on that center line. Yeah, that works right. It's offset from the true center of the wall, but it also balances out from all this busyness we have over here. So let's close out of our surface properties. Now we have a gong to bring in. That's right. Let's select the gong. I'll right-click here toward the baseboard, and we'll choose Add Actor, Static Mesh, and that's pretty close. Yeah, nice job. Now, notice, though, it's not dead on. It needs to be brought up a little bit, and if I drag up... Yeah, you just can't find that center point. That's right. So we need to take our drag grid and bring it back down. And I think that looks pretty good. Very nice. And as soon as I'm done, I'll go ahead and take that drag grid and set it back to 16. Okay, so let's close the generic browser for a minute. Uh, looking pretty good, but it might be nicer if we uh, balance out the room by putting the gong also on the other side. So I'll do this one in perspective. We'll hold down Control, and I'll make sure the gong blade and the gong are both selected. I'll hold down the Alt key, and we'll move in the x-axis, just truck this right across the Oh, wall. but take a look at that. They've designed this static mesh in such a way that we don't have to rotate it around. Very yeah. convenient. Notice, yeah, it's the same thing on both sides. So we can just simply slide it right into place. And we'll just pop this over just one more unit, and there we go. So now we have a gong on both sides of the room. Nice. Looking pretty good so far. I think the only other thing I'd really like to do in terms of static meshes in this particular room would be to add some light meshes in. Mm-hmm. Now, this is something that's really important, and it's real, uh, really common for beginners to forget about this, and that is that when you get to the point where you're lighting your meshes, you always want your lights to look like they're coming from some sort of a source. That's right. You don't want to just go in there and start throwing in light actors, which, of course, is going to give you illumination, but you don't want to have – I mean, you don't want to end up in a situation where you're just having these light sources floating in space where it doesn't look like the light is actually coming from a light-emitting source. That's right. Every light source in the real world comes from somewhere. If you're outside, it's coming from the sun or the moon or the stars. If you're indoors, it's generally
necessarily coming from a light bulb or a fireplace or a candle, but there is some sort of realistic source. Something that somebody in that room can point to and say the light's coming from there. That's right. So we need to add something similar into our room. I'm going to put two little lights here in each corner of the room. And how about mounting some up uh, higher between the beams as well? I think we're going to save that for the next room. Okay. Sounds uh, good. That's what I had in mind anyway. I got so it. let's go back into the generic browser. And we have a light package that we opened, so let's grab that, and we'll scroll up to the top. And we have uh, Light SM Free Light 301. Let's close down our generic browser. I'm just going to right-click here in the corner, Add Actor, Static Mesh, and there we go. Now I'm going to pop into the top view to really get this placed here. Mm -hmm. And that looks pretty good. Maybe we'll bring it in just a little bit in X. I'm going to make a duplicate of it, though, so we'll hold down the Alt key, and I'll drag this down a couple of units like so, so we have two of them. Mm -hmm. I'll hold down Control and make sure I select them both. And let's do that Alt-Shift trick again. So I'm holding Alt and Shift, and we'll move in the X-axis right over to the opposite side like so. Nice. Now, uh... Let's pop over back into perspective view for just a moment. And you can see as we continue to add in our static meshes, the room becomes more and more, I don't know, alive, a little more realistic looking. Yeah. Okay, so you really want to hang some lights from the ceiling. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. We can, like, split them between one, two, three, between the two pillars, and then one to the left of one. Yeah. I think that would look pretty good. And there's a, a good one in there that we can use as well. Things like free light 01 or something like it's that. It's one of these hanging lights. So we have uh, wall light 01. There's free. There we go. There's free. Yeah, light. it looks pretty good. Okay. And what I'm going to do is just let's click right up here in between these pillars, right on the ceiling, and we'll choose add actor, static mesh like so. And because snapping is set so well, it actually placed it fairly nicely. Very nice. Hang in from a little cord and everything. So uh, we might want to pull that back out from the wall just, just a, a little tad. bit though. That probably looked pretty good. Okay. And let's hold down Alt, and I'll drag a copy to fit in between these two pillars. And, uh, be, again, because of snapping, they're fitting in really nicely. And we'll even hold down Alt and put one over on the other side as well. So All right. a total of three lights. Now, putting them on one side of the room, uh, in this case, I would think means we're going to put them on the other side, too. So let's hold down Alt and Shift one more time, and we'll just drag these right over to the opposite wall. I think it was there. Nope. Uh, yeah, I was about to say, that's a little too far. There we go. Okay, now Let's see what uh, that looks like. We jump back over into perspective, back over into a lit mode. That's looking pretty good. Maybe, uh, maybe change our draw scale down. Maybe push it up. I don't know, or not draw scale, but our uh, drag grid down just one. Well, it might not be too I bad. I think they're fitting okay. All right. Yeah, I think they'll work all right. Now, uh, we still haven't lit them, so they probably look a little bit funny because they're not really emitting light. They right. just look like they're glowing, which will tend to make things look kind of strange. But, yeah, the room is really starting to take shape now. It's, All sorts of stuff going on. Absolutely. It's really coming to life. Now, in general, this is still a pretty sparse use of static meshes in terms of uh, most UT3 levels that you're going to play. Sure. So, I mean, if you want to add a whole lot more, by all means, go for it. I think this is going to do for our design, though, and we can move over to the next room. Now, in between these two rooms, I'd like to put some columns uh, like into the walls here just to kind of liven this up a little bit. And there's a mesh I've already got in mind for this. If we open the generic browser, jump into the uh, deco package, we've got, if we scroll down just a little bit, this little prayer wheel. And you can spin these and uh, say ancient prayers and whatnot. Let's go ahead and close this. I'm going to put a stack of these running down the wall. So actually four stacks total. But let's right click here on the floor. We'll choose add actor, static mesh, and there we go. And I'm going to pop into the top view to get it positioned properly. And we'll just put it right there in the corner of our hallway. Now I'm going to hold down the alt key and drag to the right to make a copy. They're right next to each other. Let go of alt, hold it down again, and drag out another copy. Repeat, let go of alt, Hold it back down, drag out a fourth copy, and there we go. Now, let's jump over to the front view where we can see all four of these meshes. I'm going to hold down Control and Alt at the same time and drag out a marquee selection box. We'll hold down the Alt key and drag upwards and stack these right on top of one another. Let's hold down Alt again, drag up, and hold down Alt one more time and drag up. So now we have these four columns made out of these uh, stacked prayer wheels. All right, next, I'm going to go back over to the top view, and let's make another copy of these on the opposite side of the hallway. So I'll hold down the Control and Alt buttons again to make another marquee selection, which is just going to grab all of those stacked up meshes. Hold down Alt one last time and just drag these to the opposite side of the hall, and let's take a look at what we've done. Very nice. So there we go. We have these uh, four columns stacked on either side of the room. 
Okay, actually, we're almost finished with static meshing. There's okay. not too much left to do. So uh, let's go back over into the uh, top viewport. What I want to do is get these uh, little brace pieces that I put against the ceiling, mm -hmm. and we want to use those on this side of the room as well. All right, sounds good. So I'm going to select all six of them. We'll hold down the Alt key, and I'm going to drag them all over so that they're spaced as evenly from the, uh, from the left wall as these were from the right wall. So you notice we have this little 32-unit gap. Here we also have a 32-unit gap, and that's exactly what I'm going for. Now, in my particular case, I just because I've you know, played with this level a couple of times and had to practice it before we actually recorded it, I'm going to add another series of braces here because we're not going to have these big ornate pillars that we've got over here on this side of the room. This is actually going to be something a bit different. So we'll uh, still leave it fairly open, but I will add one more set of these cross beams like so. So again, evenly spaced, uh, what was that, mm -hmm. 64 units in between each one. That's right. Okay, so that takes care of that. It wouldn't also be a bad idea maybe to take these little lights here that are in the corners, and we can make a duplicate of those as well. So I'll select all four, hold down Alt, and we'll just pull those right through the wall and make a copy on this side as well. We could also bring the gongs over, I think. Okay. So we'll still use the gongs. If you wanted a little more variety, please feel free to grab a different mesh. This is just for practice purposes. And I'm not going to worry about exactly where they go. I'm just going to kind of get them over here, and I'll position them uh, where I need them to be exactly here in just a moment. Okay, let's go back into perspective, and with just a little bit of duplicating, this room is already kind of starting to come to life just a little bit. I wouldn't mind some sort of pillars, though, some columns that kind of look like they're helping to hold the roof up. Sure. So let's go back over to the generic browser, and we'll take a look in the supports package, and we're going to use the, let's see if I can find the one I'm looking for, let's scroll up a little bit, I believe it's this guy, supports SM Shinto Pillar 01, so we'll select that close out the generic browser, and we'll just place this anywhere on the floor for now. I'll figure out where it's going to go in just a moment. Okay, so boom, there it is, and it looks like it kind of climbs up out of the level just a little bit. We could shrink it down just a tad, maybe down to, say, 0.8. I think that looks pretty good. Yeah? Wow. I, maybe well, a little short. So maybe 0.85. You could, or maybe you just stretch it back up here in uh, the Z direction. If you want to. Well, I, I like the uniform you okay, for you, me instead of stretching right. in one particular. All right. Yeah. Just because it's yep. you. That looks good. Okay, so now let's pop Hey, I'm those. just happy you put the lights hanging from the, uh, the ceiling in the other room. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's go back over to the top view and uh, pop over to brush wire frame mode. Now, we're going to put this first column right over here in the corner. So something uh, kind of like this. I'm, I think that's going to work for my snapping. I'll reserve the right to tweak that okay. if I need to. And then let's put another copy over in the opposite corner. So I'll hold down the Alt key, and we'll just drag this over like so. Now, it would be cool if I could have another couple of these columns. Now, just because, you know, we got these really big columns over here, this big framework. Let's put a little more support on this side of the room, though. So I'm going to hold down Alt, and we'll drag this over, say, to, well, I don't know, Maybe right about here. We're not in front of our gong. Well, we can move the gongs. Yeah, we can. The, the gong can be... Re I, I just dragged them over. Again, I didn't worry about positioning the gongs just sure. yet. What I'm going to do, though, is we'll have two sets of pillars here toward the beginning of the room. Mm -hmm. And it looks like I hit the Windows key instead of the Alt <laughs> key. And we'll drag these over like so. So now I have uh, three total sets of pillars for, you know, a grand total of six. Okay. And because the gongs, I'm sure, are scaring you because they're partly behind a, uh, a column right now, we can go ahead and center them up between these uh, two sets of pillars. I'll definitely feel better. So, say something. Uh, one to your left. Just yeah. about like that. And that should line up pretty well. But we want to pop into perspective sure. and just verify that. So, we'll go back over to a lit mode. And yeah. there we go. So, yeah, really starting to come to life as I pull my uh, gongs off the wall accidentally. Okay, I'm liking it so far, but we're not quite done. I'd like to put some statues in here. Okay. I really like the statues that are included with these packages. So let's uh, pop it back into our generic browser, and we have Deco Statue. I'm going to start with a plinth, which is uh, just going to be a pedestal to put our statues on, and we'll place this right in the center of the floor. And it's just a little big. Just a little bit. So let's pull this down to about 0.7. I think that'll work. Maybe I'll play with 0.6 and see what it looks like. That'll probably work better, okay. yeah, just for what I have in mind. Now, uh, let's go back into the top view, and I want to make sure it's not running through the wall, and it isn't. Actually, I got really lucky on that placement. It's a great placement. Okay, so well, let's go back into perspective and lit mode, and whoop, there we go. Make sure we don't get too lost. Now, let's bring in another statue, so I'll go back into the generic browser, and I love these um, cat lionish creature. I don't know what they're called, so... Uh, Please don't get on to me with my oriental history and, or lack thereof. Let's uh, right-click here on the floor. We'll choose Add Actor, 
and he's facing entirely the wrong direction. <laughs> yeah, he, that's probably not good. He's been bad, and he's being told to sit in the corner. More or less. So uh, let's rotate that around. So I'll hit the space bar to go into my rotation widget, and I'll just drag to the right and spin this guy around 180 degrees. Now keep your eyes on those little coordinate directions down at the bottom of the screen, because they're going to tell you when you actually reach 180 Right there. And then we'll let go. So now he's facing the right direction. It's a little bit large. Yeah, he is. Um, so let's try pulling that down maybe to about 0.8. I don't know, maybe 0.85. Not that small. And we'll jump into the top view, because what I want to do is not necessarily put him through the wall, but I don't want to pull him so far forward. I want this plinth to look a little more predominant. So I'll tap the space bar a couple of times to get my translation widget, and we're just going to try sliding this guy back. That's a little bit too much. That's not bad, though. Now, his, his hindquarters are sticking back through the wall, but when we get over into perspective view and uh, turn on lit mode again, most it doesn't look like the player's really going to see that. No, uh, you're not going to get back there to see. Yeah, that won't be an apparent thing, so I don't mind him being kind of jammed in there. Now, I wouldn't mind another one of these over on the opposite side, so we'll just select this guy, hold down the Alt key, and just drag a copy over. I think that's about uh, proper. We could jump into the top view and go back to brush wire frame. And, yeah, I think that's it even. Looks, yeah, it looks dead on. So there you go. Okay, now, one thing you could do, and you don't necessarily have to do this, but it, it is a thought. I just want to I want to try it out. Let's take our x-axis. I want to try setting this to negative 1. And you notice that just takes that paw that he's got on that uh, mm -hmm. sphere, and it just uh, flips that around. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of cool. Give him a nice mirror image effect. All right, now let's go back into the generic browser. We're going to put something on this plinth. Two somethings, actually. I'm going to start with, uh, there's a, a dragon. There you go. Nice little curled up dragon. So let's come over. We'll right click right on the top of the plinth. Choose Add Actor and Static Mesh. Whoa! And he's just a little oversized. Just a little. Um, I don't think the decorators plan for this. So we will begin by scaling this down quite a bit. Let's say 0.5 at first. Maybe a little more. Maybe 0.6. Uh, okay, but he's facing the wrong way. He, like the little cat things, is staring at the wall. So we'll tap spacebar, and we'll rotate 180 degrees. So now he's facing into the room. That might be a little too tall. Yeah, he is too tall. Yeah, let's try back down at 0.5 again, see what it looks like with his head in here. That's not bad. No. He's hovering a little he bit, is. though. And uh, I'll bet that we're not going to have the snap ability to put him right no. where we want him. So let's go back into our drag grid settings. I'm going to pull those down to 8, which I don't think is going to get us there either. Almost. 4 will do the trick. Uh, wrong menu. Drag grid. 4 and... Yep. Yep, that'll work. So now he's sitting right on the plinth. Notice he's not quite scooted up toward the front, but his he's not sticking through the wall either, so I like that. But let's put something else up here, too, just because it's cool. Uh, we'll go back into the generic browser. I'm going to grab this uh, samurai warrior statue. He's got a sword over his head. looks really cool. And I'm going to right-click here on the plinth, and we'll add him as a static mesh as well. And he's a little big. So let's pull him down by about 50%. So we'll set his overall scale down to 0.5. I think that'll work. And we'll rotate him around in Z to face forward, or mostly forward. Now, what I want to do is position his feet so that he's kind of straddling this part of the dragon's tail. So it's like he's standing there with his sword, and he's got this dragon kind of at his back. That's pretty close. Except for the hovering part. Yeah, except for the hovering part. And there we go. I think that's, uh, that's dead on. I'd have to really... Yeah, I think that works. No, he's actually sticking right through just a little bit. It almost doesn't matter. But in this one case, I'm going to turn off my drag grid for just a moment. Okay. Now, the only reason I'm turning it off is I'm just aligning a static mesh. If you're aligning something like a BSP brush, don't even think about it. Always leave it snapping. But we'll turn it off just for a moment while we pull this guy up, and it actually felt like it was snapping just a little bit. But that's okay. Let's go back into view, drag grid, and we'll turn this right back on. If you turn it off, make sure you turn it on. And let's go ahead and set it back to 16 as well. All right. And there we go, back to our defaults, and there's all of our statues in play. The only other thing I want to do is add a little more lighting into this room. So uh, let's go back into our generic browser, and we have this Light 2 package, which currently has nothing in it until you click here in the generic browser to refresh it. And we have this string of light lanterns, which I think is the only thing in this package at this time. So we'll go ahead and close out the generic browser. I'll right-click here on the back wall, choose Add Actor, String Lantern 01, and now we need to get this positioned. I'll do this once again in the top view. 
and brush wire frame view, and this should string pretty well. Oh yeah. Right in between those columns, but it looks like I might need to tweak the positioning of those columns to get it to fit, or just scale the whole thing down. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's do that. Let's pull the scale down to maybe 0.9, and that looks pretty good. So now it's running right in between the columns. Let's take a look and see what it looks like in perspective. And go into lit mode, and up. <laughs> Man, it needs to kind of be pulled up a little bit because it's sitting right on that dragon's back. And there we go. So now nice. we've run some string lanterns back behind everything. The lighting looks a little funny because technically we don't really have lighting. We just have this work light system set up. But we're going to actually start fixing that in the next video. For now, this is going to wrap things up for this video. We've decorated as much as we're going to. But if you're just starting to get into it and you're really liking what you're doing, Feel free to just add static mesh like crazy. Experiment because static meshes once again play a vital role in the final look and feel of your levels. That's right. And this is going to wrap things up for this video.